Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Tuesday. Coming up later in the program, we have Tuesdays with Charlie. We call on to talk to your papa. That's always fun. That's my favorite part of the week, honestly. I know. It's a fun time, you know, for a lot of people because uh, we get to listen to a crazy guy for a few minutes. So. <laughs> I mean, that's awesome. That's just a hoot. Uh, singing when tense helps you avoid anxiety and depression. So next time you're like tense about something, you're supposed, you're supposed to sing about it. I would be singing all the <laughs> time. Um, how about this over here? Tyson Foods is working with a company to design a fuel made out of animal fat. I suppose they probably have a lot of extra they probably do. left over. Hey, so that's like, hey. awesome if they can figure yeah. out a way to make that work. That's great. Use really it all. Cool. And one other thing. Britain's independent newspaper reports that first disco and the 70s fashions made a comeback. Now, the scents of the 70s are back. Sales are rising, especially for young consumers on things like Brute and Old Spice. No way. And Charlie. Charlie. There's a scent called Charlie. I remember Charlie. It's what does Charlie girl. smell? Oh, it's for a girl? Yeah, it's well, a girl. Never mind then. So we've got Tuesdays with Charlie, but that's yeah, no, he, something completely. He would not it doesn't wear smell that. like He's him. an old spice guy. He's an old. Always has been. He's an old something. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening on a Tuesday. We've got more fun stuff on the way. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. It is Tuesday, January the 10th. So today is 0110. I like that. I know you do. You get all excited when that I happens. Think it's, the, uh, see, I don't know what it's called, but like when there's dates and there's times uh, and like even like the odometer on my car. Oh, I know. I don't know why I like that kind of stuff. I'm not the only one. I have friends that take pictures of that and put it on Facebook. So do so. you. I know. Yeah. But I have friends <laughs> like me. I'm a weirdo. I can't help it. But today is League of Nations Day, National Cut Your Energy Costs Day, National Poetry at Work Day, and Stephen Foster Day today. So Poetry at Work Day. Who's Stephen Foster? Yeah, he's a guy that we're celebrating his day today. <laughs> uh, poetry at Work Day. Roses are red. Violets are blue. I'm so glad you're here so I can talk to you. Wow. Yeah, good? No? Mm, Probably no. not. <laughs> hey, it's poetry, and we're at work. Where's your poem, Heidi? Can you write it from all out of time. nationwide? <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll talk about that later in the program. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. It's a new year and many have made resolutions. Have you? If your resolution is to quit smoking, I want to help. This is one of the biggest resolutions every year. I met a hypnotist that's been able to help people with this one. He can send you a Stop Smoking Hypnosis CD program that you just listen to and it's designed to help you quit smoking. It's available at a discount for our listeners right now at Radiosavings.com. Get the tobacco-free CD program for just $40. That offer is available right now at Radiosavings.com. That's Radiosavings.com. John and Heidi. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. The election is done, right? It's over. We've got an inauguration yes. coming up here before you know it. But there's an app called Hi from the Other Side that is now hoping to bridge the divide between the supporters from different sides. So if you were on this side or if you were on that side, started this is actually kind of a good idea. Started by a 29 year old named Henry Sai. He's a student at Harvard Business School. The app brings together supporters of each candidate to do the thing they want to do, to talk to one another. Interested users are paired up with someone who voted for the other candidate. The site encourages users to not just email, but to actually speak to each other, uh, whether over the phone or in video or in person. Do you think this is a good idea? People meeting I up who I disagree. Th I think this is a bad idea. <laughs> Everywhere they download these, murders will be high on <laughs> Yeah. I, I got to say this. I... I have a, a person who he and I are politically uh, complete polar opposites, and uh, he and I got in quite a little spat on Saturday on Facebook. And I, I came up, I was all proud, and I showed Heidi, I'm like, hey, look at this little, it was just him and I going back and forth for like 10 minutes. She's like, why are you wasting your time on this? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> there are some people that you just don't bother talking to. I and mean, some people is, are not worth your time. I know. And this particular gentleman... I agree. ...is not worth your time. I know. But, you know, there was just something he, he wanted to argue. And, and here's the fun thing. Is, it would be different if he was having an intelligent, yeah. intellectual conversation. Well, and, but he kept talking about, oh, you're fat. Yeah. He's, that's, that's like a <laughs> six-year-old. And, and it's funny because I, I 
called him a bully and it makes him mad that he says I'm a bully. But he is. So he tries to bully me into saying that he's not a bully. I'm like, But he is. I mean, when you when you impossible. say things like that to somebody, that's all you're doing. You're yeah. just bullying because you well, don't have an intellectual conversation left. But he to told have. me he's the smartest person he knows. Oh yeah. He said so. I so I saw that. Be. He's not. I am so intelligent <laughs> I can barely even And he handle. may be the smartest person he knows because most people are too smart <laughs> to hang around with somebody like that. <laughs> Bingo. That's so, the deal. there you go. Anyway, for those of you looking for the app, it's called Hi from the Other Side, and I'm probably not going to download that. We do have some more fun stuff on the way, and we're going to say hi to Charlie later in the program. It's Tuesday, so we have Tuesdays with Charlie on the way. John and Heidi. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain, and this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. A man robs a bank and then catches a bus as a getaway vehicle. Yeah, that's not a good idea. (laughs) Stole 800 bucks. After observing uh, him make the getaway on a city bus, bank employees just called the police. Portland police stopped a bus. And guess what? They found him. The cops said uh, they found all of the money. And they asked him to explain why he was in possession of of so much money. He answered, "Um, I'm a drug dealer. Yeah, and a good one. That's what he said. Wow. <laughs> Officers replied, well, if it's drug money, uh, we're going to have to seize it. Then he goes, no, 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 wait a minute. I robbed um, a bank. It's okay. 200 of that is my money, and it doesn't belong to the bank. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, he got busted. Not the brightest dude, but uh, there you go. Kids, that's what happens when your brain is on drugs. John and Heidi. Now your moment of duh. How could it be illegal to get a bargain at the supermarket? Well, take a listen and I'll explain it to you. There's one place in the world that you don't have to worry about paying high prices for groceries. That is in Malaysia. The government there is cracking down on shop owners uh, owners that are inflating their prices. Get this, Heidi. They're also cracking down on shoppers who pay too much for their food. Customers, as well as shopkeepers, can face fines or two years in jail if they're found guilty of ignoring price controls on a designated 13 food items. Things like potatoes, cabbage, fish, and red chili. Over 700 enforcement officers have been deployed to check on prices. A spokesperson for the Federation of Malaysia Consumers Association, so FMCA, I don't know, that doesn't really stand How for How is it the it? customer's fault? They call it a crazy and ridiculous move. I don't know. They're saying, hey, if, you, if you're buying stuff that's they're price gouging you and you're paying the, the fees, you can get a fine for it Right, but if you too. need it. I don't know. I mean, it's like going to a convenience store to buy, I don't know, yeah. garbage bags. You're going to pay a premium <laughs> because wife, you need she, them. She wouldn't love me. We needed garbage bags the other day, and we looked at a, a convenience store. I was like, no. I said, I need to get them. She's like, no way, because it was <laughs> a bag that's like a dollar somewhere else. It's almost eight bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said, no, that is not happening. That, yeah, that was, I was like, okay, <laughs> I can probably wait. Coming up, we have your scoop of the day. That's on the way. This scoop of the day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Now your scoop of the day. Mattel is introducing an Amazon Echo style toy for kids. You think this is a good idea? I don't know. Echo, it's it's a thing where you talk to it and it answers questions and stuff. Uh, oh, all right. Th- this is maybe not a good idea as a toy. I hope that they can somehow make sure that it doesn't... Well, I don't know. It might be the easy way to have the sex talk with your kids. <laughs> yeah. Just say, here. Mom, what does this mean? Ask this <laughs> yeah. question. Here's a toy. <laughs> J-Lo, also known as Jennifer Lopez, has obtained a temporary restraining order against a man who's accused of harassing the singer and actress, and he was trespassing at her home. So that's not that's good. That's too bad. You know, we have fans uh, that uh, are always harassing <laughs> us. And, no, we don't really. We don't have that. Usually when people find out who we are, they go to like a different aisle at the checkout lane. So they're like, oh, I'll check out over here. Hey, how far would you go to hide your drunk driving arrest, Heidi? A New I York- would never have a drunk driving arrest. I wouldn't arrest. either. It's a bad idea. Don't do it. New York City man who was arrested in charge while driving uh, while intoxicated in New York unsuccessfully attempted to keep his name out of the news by removing the news source altogether. He bought 900 newspapers at $1.25 each in an effort to keep it. Uh, he didn't want other people to see his DUI arrest. But that's not going to happen. 
Unless he bought the TV stations yeah. and so the here's radio the thing. stations. You spent about over $1,000 to keep this out of the news, and here we are talking about it. Right. So it's it's gotten more attention because of the knucklehead move that you made. Don't Just don't drink and drive. That's a better idea. He could have just used that money to pay his fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Joseph Talbot was the guy's name, by the way. Just, you know, just want to make sure we... We get that in the story. Give him we, the credit. I had I had somehow glanced over that. And, uh, <laughs> hey, McDonald's, uh, they're everywhere. And now they're also in Vatican City. They opened a McDonald's right up the street from the Pope. Oh, I guess he nice. has a hankering for America's favorite fries or something. I don't know. And he really doesn't have to watch that figure with this nice loose-fitting robe <laughs> that he gets to wear. So you're saying we don't need to stay on our Once diet? Once you become we the Pope, you can our... kind of let yourself go. <laughs> I think that's I think that's one of the benefits of being I the Pope. I don't think so. <laughs> hey, South Korea is ramping up plans to create a deception. I'm sorry. Let me try that again. A decapitation unit. There you oh. go. Oh. Their uh, chief mission is to paralyze North Korea by wiping out its top officials, including Kim Jong Un. The program, formerly known as Korea Massive Punishment and Rehabil- uh, Retaliation System, there we go, uh, was originally slated for 2019, but South Korea moved it up a couple of years as a result of Kim's constant threats and attacks to their neighbors with nuclear bombs. So now they have a decapitation unit. They're trying to chop the dude's head off. Well, that would do it. Wouldn't it just be smarter to get a sniper? I mean, you can do that from a distance. you got to be right there to decapitate the dude. I don't know. I'm not trying to tell you your business, South Korea. I mean, I've never decapitated or shot anybody, so what do I know? Maybe you guys are on top of that. More than half of Americans who regularly go to the gym... <laughs> We, we we got a membership now. We just haven't been haven't there yet. Haven't been there yet. Uh, they said that they sure dread they dread the month of January because they got a bunch of schmucks like us who <laughs> join the gym, come in and take up the place, and don't even know how to use this stuff. So for those of you who are you know dyed in the wool, tried and true, I go to the gym all the time. From the rest of us schmucks, I just want to apologize. I'm sorry. Trust me, we'll be over it in and a couple you know of weeks. What? If you're really a good person, if you see somebody who doesn't know how to use the equipment, maybe take a second yeah. and show them. Excuse me, sir. This is how you do it. You're doing it all wrong. I'm like, oh, I was just hanging my clothes here. That's what we do with it at home. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I There was a thing online. I was a guy talking to a treadmill salesman. I said, I need one that can hold six pairs of pants. <laughs> I'm like, we've owned a treadmill, and that's what we did with it. All right. Our final story here. The average woman will spend the equivalent of 41.5 months of her life chatting on the phone to her mom. Research revealed most women make at least one call a day to their mom with a conversation lasting about 21 minutes. One in 10 women call their mother at least three times a day, spending a total of 63 minutes chatting. Heidi, are you above average or below I'm average? Way below average. You are such a terrible daughter. I'm way below average. I Someday, hardly ever. You, you call your mother way more often than I, don't than think I call I do. my mother. Oh, uh, yeah, you do. No, I hardly ever. I, and I feel bad. I, I should. I should call her more often. As a matter of fact, but mom, every time I'll I call see you, you're today. like, I'm, oh, I'm t- I said, who are you talking to? My mom. Oh, you're I, always, I mean, it's and not that's always. a good thing. That's not no. a bad thing. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm saying you, to, you call your mom way more than I call my mom. You're man points from me right now, aren't you? Like, hey, mama's boy. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <laughs> that's what you're doing over there. No, not you're at all. I'm puffing just up saying. Your chest. Oh, I'm more masculine than you. <laughs> Well, guess what? Well, we're going to call your dad. Woman. I don't even need to do we're that. We're going to call your dad right now. We do call we my have, dad once We're a calling week. Tuesdays with Charlie. We'll call him next. That's on the way. John and Heidi. Radio advertising works. When it's done right, it works even better. There are many things you can do to get a better response, and shouting sale really isn't the best thing, believe it or not. Did you know that when you put words to music, they're nine times more memorable? If you're trying to get people to remember your company, consider a jingle. We work with one of the very best jingle companies in the business, and we'd love to use music to help you grow your company. Learn more and hear examples at RadioReallyWorks.com. That's RadioReallyWorks.com. And it's time right now for my favorite program, something we do every Tuesday, just because we can. We pick up the phone. We call my father-in-law for a little segment we like to call Tuesdays, Tuesdays with Charlie. Charlie. How you doing, Charlie? You know, I'm doing I'm doing great. Well, good. <laughs> great is a really good way to start. So, what kind yes, of yes, it is. What kind of cool stuff were you learn about today? Okay, now today's going to be all about stuff that. You just should know. Oh, okay. We probably know all this stuff then. Well, you should know it. I hope so. That's why we're doing it today. <laughs> nice. Uh, did you know that water is the number one cause of drowning? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt that. That's 
Probably. That's the number one cause right there. <laughs> and, hey, this is kind of a two-part thing here. Did you know that apple juice does not taste like watermelon? Apple juice does not. <laughs> no, I don't think it does. And then did you know that your sister is a girl? <laughs> yeah. I knew that my sister was a girl. See, this is stuff you should know. Okay. <laughs> did you read this stuff off a bathroom wall by, by chance? <laughs> This come from my staff, let me tell you. Okay. Got a staff of 13. <laughs> this is the best they could come up with. <laughs> hey, then, did you know that wood is called wood because it's made of wood? <laughs> okay. That's a good reason to call it wood. <laughs> hey, here's a good one. All right. The average human body contains enough bones to make an entire skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It is true. That is true. true. Uh, oh, oh, the word incorrectly is the only word from the English language that is always spelled incorrectly. <laughs> it's spelled incorrectly. Ah, uh, oh, <laughs> I see what he did there. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Had to Got think that? about that one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, then uh, dying is the number one cause of deaths in Mexico. In Mexico. In just Mexico. <laughs> That's crazy. Got a couple more. Let's see. Oh, an ancient study in New in Newfoundland, Newfoundland has shown that bald people cannot cut their hair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, then I got one last thing here for you. All right, what's that? Wearing sunglasses at night won't help you eat peaches faster. <laughs> <laughs> So wearing sunglasses at night will not help me eat peaches faster? Correct. The, see, I, I would have thought that it would. So. <laughs> well, see, that's why I bring it to your attention. Well, I'm glad that we got this info off our chest here, because this is good stuff. This could this could save your life someday, folks, knowing the, knowing the answers to those questions right there. Uh, you might be on Jeopardy or something. You might need that stuff. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> if, you, if you're ever on a game show where they ask those questions, you are on the wrong game show. <laughs> you're on a weird game show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got a question for you, though, Charlie. You ready for this? I'm ready. It's not as good as your questions, but it is a question you might get right. The oh. eight-hour workday and minimum wage... And the five-day work week, they were all established by one person. Who was that? Do you know? Wilbur Finkmeister. No. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Wilbur Finkmeister? No. Yeah. No. Was I close? No, not even close. <laughs> you you work at a place that has this guy's last name on a sign out in front of you. Rasmussen? No. <laughs> Ford. <laughs> Henry Ford. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <Butt head. laughs> Did I trick you there? This is not, <laughs> this is not a trick question. <laughs> Henry Ford. <laughs> He's the one that established the eight hour workday, minimum wage, and the five day work week. They were all established by Henry Ford. So there you go. I'll be darned. Yeah, now you know something. I learned some. And you also don't you, you don't have to wear your sunglasses while you're eating peaches. You learned that on today's program too. So <laughs> You're welcome. You sure that Wilbur and Henry aren't related? They could be. They, they're probably <laughs> cousins, distant cousins or something. Something like that. Yes. Well, Charlie, it's always a pleasure to visit with you. We definitely learn something each and every time. And today we didn't learn a bunch of important stuff, but we learned a bunch of stuff. Stuff's good. Stuff is very good. <laughs> well, we'll talk to you next week, Charlie. Bye, Daddy. I'll be here. Bye, Flop. Bye, John. <laughs> Bye-bye. My father-in-law right there. We talk to him every Tuesday just because we can. It's a little program we like to call Tuesdays, Tuesdays with, with Charlie. Charlie. John and Heidi. When is the last time you changed the air filter on your furnace? Now, don't be embarrassed. That happens to a bunch of us. The furnace filter should be changed often. This will help your heating and cooling system run more efficiently, and it'll even extend the life of your system. Now, there's an easy way to make it happen. Filter Easy, a new subscription service that delivers your size filter right to your door on the schedule you choose. It's easy. Filter Easy, one less thing to worry about. Learn about a special offer available now at radiosavings.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Little League Baseball had its birthplace where? Do you know? <laughs> no. No, it was in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. <laughs> I don't know how See, I would know that. one more thing Heidi doesn't know. 
<laughs> Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Patty, Maxine, Laverne. Who are these ladies? They are the who? The Andrews sisters. <laughs> you don't know nothing. How would I know this? Who are the Andrews sisters? And who played Davy Crockett in the 1955 Disney film? Will Ferrell. No, what? In 1955? <laughs> No, it's Fess Parker. There you go. <laughs> what the Where heck? Go. Where, did just... <laughs> you find, where did you find those questions? Yeah, just, you were trying to make me look like an idiot earlier. I figured <laughs> I'd find the, like, the most obscure <laughs> most obscure things I could possibly There like. you go. You should call your mother and talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> My mom gave me all those questions, by the way. No, she didn't really. Thanks for listening. You're listening to The John and Heidi Show on a Tuesday. This is Richard Lustig, the world's first and only seven-time lottery game grand prize winner. Since I endorsed Lottolicious, I have won something every single draw. They do all the work. You don't have to worry about running to the store to buy your tickets. They take care of all that. So if you're looking for the best way to play the lottery, to give yourself the best chance of winning, go to RadioLottoPool.com and join today. Again, that website is RadioLottoPool.com. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi show on a Tuesday. So, Heidi, do you think you're ugly? No. I don't think you're ugly either. I think you're beautiful. Are you depressed about thinking that you're ugly? No. Do you think about cosmetic surgery? Well, yes, but not because I think I'm ugly. (laughs) Well, if you do think about that, you might want to think again. New research has shown people who spend thousands of dollars on a nip here and a tuck there, they are no happier as an end result. It says here, medical researchers from Australia surveyed the patients of a cosmetic clinic. About 50% of them said they had symptoms of what uh, they call imagined ugliness disorder. That's apparently a thing. I-U-D, imagined ugliness disorder. So even after the surgery, they still felt ugly. Up to half of the women, almost 50% of them, who have cosmetic surgery suffer from depression and unhappiness after the surgery. Researchers suggest they would they would benefit more from psychological help instead of going under the knife. What do you mm. think of that? I don't know. I, I think every time we watch uh, Dirty Dancing, you, you tell me the answer. Because we Jennifer Grey, you're like, yep. oh, she's so beautiful. And she's and she went and had a nose job. And you're like, uh-huh. oh, she doesn't even look like herself anymore. No, she ru- I, and I, I, saw, I believe that she ruined her face. She, she's still be- she's she's pretty, beautiful, but absolutely. she's not her. Yeah, and, and she just doesn't look like, and she was in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. So every time we watch these movies, you're always like, she's she so just doesn't pretty. look like herself anymore. Yeah, she I'm was like, so beautiful. beautiful. Why'd she change that? She's still beautiful, but just, she just, well, it's like maybe, a completely different person. Maybe she has IUD, Imagine maybe. Ugliness Disorder. There are people that have that. So here's the thing. Uh, if you're with somebody who doesn't like you because of the way you look, maybe you're with the wrong person. That's exactly right. I mean, don't change who you are to make somebody else happy. And According to this story, if you change who you are, you might not even make yourself happy. Because right. when it's all said and done, you're going to go, well, I guess that wasn't it. Now I need to go do that. There are people who have like addictions to cosmetic surgeries. There are people who've had that done hundreds, if not thousands of times. I only need three. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about this, Heidi. I'm going to do a little intervention between now and the next time we get back on the radio. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. It's a new year and many have made resolutions. Have you? If your resolution was to lose weight, you're not alone. This is the single biggest resolution every year. And every year, millions of people try and many fail. I met a hypnotist that's been able to help people with this one. He can send you a weight loss hypnosis program on CD that you just listen to and it's designed to help you reduce the cravings. It's available at a discount for our listeners right now at Radiosavings.com. Get the weight loss CD program for just $50. That offer is available now at Radiosavings.com. John and Heidi. College students can get a bachelor's degree in a great many subjects, and now you can add one more to the list, Heidi. The Bachelor of Bagpipes. <laughs> yeah. What R- on earth would well, anybody do with that? It's probably still better than some of the things out oh there. My. The Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama in well, Glasgow. In Scotland, okay. They've had openings for 10 students. They've already received over 50 applications since they advertised it. Uh, to receive a bachelor's degree in bagpipes, you must study piping technology, the physics of sound, and the musical transcripts. You'll be placed in a teacher's 
training college, and then uh, you'll annoy people with a bunch of weird noises for a while. I'm sure in Scotland there are ample career opportunities for somebody in Honestly, that line of work. As much as I would, that probably wouldn't take you far in the United States. Well, you know what? Here's the thing: there are people that play them here, and and here's the thing: I have a friend that plays the bagpipes, and I think that it's fascinating. Uh, it, I wouldn't say that it's like a romantic instrument by any means. We don't know if he's any good. Well, yeah, well, on <laughs> How do you tell? <laughs> anyway, I think he's. I think it's cool. And when I've heard people do it, you know, there are even a couple of like big songs from back in the seventies that had bagpipes, and I was like, that's kind of cool. ACDC had a song with bagpipes in it. Hmm. I was like, you don't see that in other songs. You hardly ever see that. So anyway, now you can get a a bachelor of bagpipes. And by the way, if you play the bagpipes, you're probably a bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, just throwing that out there. That was clever. Thank that you. was a Heidi joke. Thank I like you. that. All right. <laughs> John and Heidi. Danish scientists report that at least one in four heavy long-term smokers who do not quit will develop deadly lung disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease as well. Uh, they also include chronic bronchitis and emphysema as leading causes of death worldwide. As the lungs are destroyed, signs will begin to show like fatigue, shortness of breath, and difficulty breathing. So one in four, 25% of long-term heavy smokers uh, says that's what's going to happen to them. Those are not good odds. No. And and yeah. that's one of those things where, you know, if you're, if you're making the decision to do that. New Year's resolution. But I'm saying if you're making the decision to smoke when you know that it's not good for you. Uh, if, if you just heard this story and you're like smoking your cigarette and you're going, what? This isn't good for me? I mean, most people probably know that by now. It's a choice. It's very difficult to quit, though. I know it is. Like with most things. It, I mean, there absolutely. are lots of things that we do that are not good for us, but Wait, we continue to do I'm them. I'm the perfect picture of health. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid this chair is going to break. We are but... <laughs> both emotional eaters. <laughs> we are. Holy cow. I emotionally eat too much. Yeah. And then the other thing is that we're so in love with each other that I, I go, hey, I could probably pack on another 20 pounds and she'd still she'd still deal with me. So. I'd still stick around. There's no doubt. I'm not going to say I wouldn't tell gonna, you. You really need to. She gets to the point where she's like poking me with a something. stick. Or you should do something with this. fatty. <laughs> <laughs> I might actually start worrying about it. All right. Coming up here in a bit, we're going to be talking about tech-centric New Year's resolutions. We're going to be done with the resolution stuff here in a bit. Just like the resolutions, you'll be done with those too, I'm sure. <laughs> but we've got some more fun stuff on the way. John and Heidi. It's a new year, and many have made resolutions. Have you? If your resolution was to quit drinking or to kick a drug habit, we want to help. Our friends at Keystone can help you determine the best program for your particular needs. This is something that really matters to me. My father was an alcoholic. He lost his battle at age 49. That's just too young. If you're searching for help, I hope my friends at Keystone can help you find the help you're looking for. Call 844-204-1055. That's Keystone, 844-204-1055. John and Heidi. We are a few days into the second week of January, and there's still some people out there that are you know, following through with these resolutions they made. But we have here some stuff to help you, some tech-centric New Year's resolution things. So it says, between your regimen of daily workouts and volunteering and painting and all of that other stuff that you said you were going to do, here are some tech-centric resolutions. Low impact, they'll help you keep your memories and your online identity safer and keep your mind sharper and your friendships healthier. Good stuff, huh? Mm-hmm. So like this, back up your stuff. If you have files on your computer, back them up. How often do you do it? Most people, not often enough. Some people, never. If you're not backing up your files, you're just asking for trouble. Let me tell you, I had a computer that died. What was that? Mm-hmm. Three months, four months oh ago? Oh, my gosh. That was a nightmare. And I still, yeah, there's still stuff that I've never gotten back. So bad idea. Another one, uh, our number, what are we on? Two. Number two, <sighs> turn on two-factor authentication. What, what the heck is that? It says, hopefully by now you know. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> hopefully by now you know and follow all the best practices for t- protecting your passwords. Yeah. Avoid dictionary words. Use multi-word passphrases. Yeah, we all know this. Don't use the same passwords on a bunch of different sites. That's where I go wrong. Me too. My password is Don't not say a, what dictionary, it is, pa- a dictionary word, Yeah, but I use the same thing repeatedly. You want me to say what repeatedly. it is? No. It says here, uh, you're supposed to do something different uh, when you're going on like Gmail or whatever. Uh, use different, different passwords in different places. Scan all photos, and that way we'll we'll have them. So if something ever happens with the pictures, if you scanned them and you have a digital copy too, 
that's a good idea. Stack of old photos doesn't take long to scan them in. And then uh, if something does happen, like I said, you got a backup. And then the last thing on here, these are your digital resolutions that you should be doing. Step away from the phone. If you spend a lot of your day with your nose poked into a smartphone or a tablet or a computer, take a little time to make a little effort to say, I'm going to live in the real world and I'm not going to live so much in the digital world. I've been trying to get better at that, and I'm still terrible at it. I'm terrible at it, too. Oh, but man, we'll I, sit I, next to each other, both of us on the, the phone, dinking around. I'm like, hey, we should talk to each yeah. other. <laughs> yeah. And All there right. are a lot of times where I, I do make a conscious effort to put it down, and I'm not going to u- use it at all. And yeah. most time, like when we're out to eat together, just yeah. us, my phone's in my purse, and I'm just sitting there looking at you, and you're looking at your phone. Okay, you should remind me. So say, hey, put that away. Put, John, put that phone in your I, purse. I just really, I, I like it that, <laughs> I don't, that you I don't have a purse. <laughs> look like a jerk to all the other tables. Yeah, I just sit there and patiently wait. She's over there writing writing notes on napkins that say help, and she's holding them up. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only, he must have abducted her. I don't know why else somebody that hot would be with that guy. He looks like a gorg. I just don't get it. All right, we've got some good news coming your way. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always try to wrap things up around here with some good news, and I think this is good news. Julie survived a shooting at a Kansas cell phone store, but doctors Yikes. had to amputate her arms oh. and legs. Yikes. Oh, my gosh. According to KWCH-TV, she hoped to be fitted with uh, myoelectric hands at the cost of $130,000 each. Oh, my gosh. But insurance would only pay for medical hooks. That's when a Wichita couple stepped in. After a chance meeting with Cook Industry VP and attorney Mark Holden, Holden and his wife surprised Julie with a Christmas present, her brand new hands. Holden did not want any attention for his generosity. He says her story is simply a reminder to be grateful for what we have and to pay it forward any chance you get. I think that is really cool. That's amazing. So he was in a position, the family, they were in a position to say, you know what? We should help her. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That is really cool. And I love the fact that it says right in the story that he didn't want any Mm -hmm. attention. It's not like he was holding a press conference and look at me. Look how awesome I am. Was Holden, Mark Holden, (laughs) H-O-L. Is that what it was? It was. How did you remember that? (laughs) Would Would you just... You know, it's one thing if you're out there looking for attention... But yeah. it's a completely different thing if other people are saying, hey, that's awesome, and yeah. we should all be more like Mark Holden, attorney. <laughs> <laughs> Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> oh, we're both a couple of goofs. You know, it's funny. I had a friend on Facebook. He was talking about uh, how perfect his, you know, it's like he and his wife are just such a good fit together and, and was so glad that he found her. And I, I commented on there that, that I, I'm glad that I found you because – neither one of us are perfect but i said it's like the edges of a puzzle you know those pieces that that fit together they're both goofy shapes but when you find the one that fits your shape that's a good thing Uh and if we were both smooth and flat it'd be easy for us to drift apart but because we both have these weird curves curves (laughs) we we stay together better (laughs) that's now it sounds like a fat joke in there doesn't it that's not what i'm saying but I'm just saying, it's the our differences that make us, you know, our imperfections that make us perfect for each other. So Agreed. I love you, baby. I love you. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. <laughs> goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. I've got a link to the story over here, by the way, at our Facebook page. If you want to read all about this, uh, again, Mark Holden from Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> if you want to read all about it, uh, the Facebook page is facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show.